Hello everyone, I'm Tequila Sunset, and today, CA put out their trailer for Thrones of Decay, so we're going to do the whole CSI enhanced shit and try to look through and see what's what. Let's get this started. So yeah, it's focused around the Siege of Nuln, that definitely looks like a Carmine, yep, that's Elspeth von Draken on our Carmine Dragon, pretty cool. Okay, so in case you can't tell, she is a death caster. So, like, she casts a lot of lore of death, and she's on a carbine dragon, which is basically a dragon that's been infused with a um, the winds of I think it's Shaish they call it uh, the winds of like the lore of death, basically. So, hopefully, they do actually do something with that, and they have a, some unique element like trait or something like that to it that's thematic toward the lore of death. But um, otherwise, yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah, like she looks awesome. And, uh, hold on. We get a better look at the dragon here, or maybe we'll get one later. But yeah, the dragon looks cool, from what I can see. She looks awesome. It has purple sun as Arius. So yeah, that's pretty dope. Let me see. Demogryph of Knights, we already got those. Theodore Bruckner. Okay, so that's Theodore Bruckner. He's the legendary hero, then. Um, his big thing is basically he's just a really good combatant. Um, he's on a big old Demogryph who's, like, supposed to be, like, especially huge. Um, there's some random dead guy just chilling right here. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, and that's like, I think it's called the Stormlands or something like that. But yeah, his thing is he's just gonna be a beat stick in melee. Uh, which is great. Uh, I, uh yeah. Empire doesn't really have that in their, uh, hero slot. I mean, they have Gotrick and Felix, but they're not in mobile, so. Uh, Bruckner could actually give him a mobile, uh, aggressive option. So that's pretty cool. Uh, these look like Nuln Ironsides. And they got repeater rifles as well, so. That's interesting. They're basically just gonna be, like, um, better armored than handgunners. And um, they'll have the damage profile that Outrider uh, repeater uh, rifles have. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Lots of new DACA for the Empire, looks like. Plague Ogres. Okay, so we got Plague Ogres, which I'm actually uh, excited for Nurgle on this one. Because they have an opportunity to get some actually like aggressive units. Because right now, all they can really do is heal block. Like, that's it. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, that gets old kind of quick. So them getting something like Plague Trolls is a nice addition, I think. It's very welcome. Is that a Toad Dragon? Sneaking around in the background. That looks like a toad dragon sneaking around in the background. Okay, we'll get a better look at him later. Okay. Okay, so this guy looks like an engineer hero. I saw some people saying he was the, um, like the Hawkwind long rifle unit or whatever. I think this guy looks like an engineer. I mean, he's got, first of all, he's got like a unique face. He's got the little gizmos and stuff on his helmet and whatnot. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, he looks awesome. The only thing, if I'm thinking from like a multiplayer perspective, is like restock on stuff like the Sunmaker and War Wagon sounds like a pain in the ass. But um, otherwise, he's still a cool unit. I hope they give him, they don't just have him be like a foot character or like a horse character or something like that. I hope they give him like Steam Tank mounts. Steam Tank mounts would be uh, pristine. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, he looks cool. Yeah, there's, uh, actually, yeah, it looks like Tamar Cannon, big old Toe Dragon. Look at this thing. Look at that big old beastie. Okay, so, God, this ugly motherfucker. Alright, so. Toad Dragon looks really cool, and similar to the, um, the, uh, Plague Trolls, or, pl uh, Plague Ogres, excuse me, um, this guy looks really cool, nice and aggressive, that's what I like about him, he looks at least, he's not gonna be super fast, right, he's not gonna be like, uh, I don't know, like fucking 70, like 75 speed or whatever, but he is, at least, does at least seem more dynamic than just like a grid and clean one or something like that, which is, uh, good, if Nurgle gets, like, at least like a, like, they don't need to be like, as fa like a super mobile, like, faction like the Widows, but if they can get a couple more, like, dynamic options that at least just let their playstyle breathe a little bit, that would be, um, nice to me. So, yeah, that definitely has me intrigued, uh, for Nurgle. Otherwise, let me see. Wait, what are you guys? Those look like Rot Knights. Um, yeah, those definitely look like Rot Knights, which is nice. Again, more mobile options, aggressive mobile options is fantastic. Um, really does open up their playstyle and also rot knights are just really cool so yeah that's pretty nice so you got rot knights got malachi micasin okay so let me just get another look at him looks like he's yeah look at him okay very very cool um yeah he looks awesome uh i think he look get that mad scientist look with like the goggles and stuff so basically he's like a slayer engineer guy which is just a really awesome combo looks like he's just chilling with uh gothic and felix so that's nice um who is this guy is this just a regular Slayer? For some reason, he looks a bit different from me. Like, his uh, Mohawk is more pronounced. So that could be the legendary hero. 
Um, so yeah, I think that might actually be a legend here. If they get like a Slayer. Yeah, especially since, hold on. Actually, I got a better look at him there. Hold on. See, look at that, that triple Mohawk thingy. Yeah, that's definitely like a It's either like a generic Slayer uh, hero or like a legendary Slayer hero, something like that. But either way, that's very cool. Uh, dwarves getting a Slayer hero is very awesome. And of course, here we got the big one. Yeah, Thunder Barge coming in here looking really awesome. Yeah, so it looks like they got more uh, Thunder. I think those are Thunderers on the back. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah, that looks like an engineer guy. So if, if the Master Engineers got Thunder Barge mounts, fantastic. Amazing choice. Um, they also got a little, like, galley down here where they're just chilling there having a pint. That's pretty dope. Um, let me just try to get a look at these rifles in a second. So their main ordinance is these two cannons on the front. But they also, it doesn't look like they have anything on the sides. But it looks like they have bombs on the sides that they drop. So that's going to be cool. Okay, did these guys... I'm trying to think, does that look different from a regular Thunderer rifle? I'm probably just, like, tr looking for stuff where there isn't. That's probably just regular Thunderers. Anyway, so, yeah, so it looks like Engineers. Yeah, then this big old bombardment comes in here, awesome stuff. So, yeah, Thunder Barges look really cool. There's the Goblin Hewer. Um, oh, let me take a look at those Slayers. Are those, those Slayers look different. Huh. I, I'm trying to see... Nope, stop. Is that a bold Slayer? Okay, they might have a different Slayer unit, uh, looks like. And, um... And then, the, yeah, the Goblin Hero here, probably just gonna be, like, a, a War Machine, just, like, good, um, armor-piercing anti-infantry damage from range. So that's gonna be pretty nice. Um... I really hope, and, okay, we're getting close to the end of this trailer, and um, I only skimmed through like the skimmed through it a bit, like skipped around just to get a quick like vibe check or whatever. So hopefully they don't get like a shard dragon just showing up right at the end, because I really don't think they should get one. Um, yeah, if you want to give them like big bombastic single entities, give them war machines because they're the dwarfs, so that's great. But um, uh, yeah, hopefully they don't get a shard dragon. But thunder barge looks awesome. Tamber can looks cool. Okay, yeah. that's the um. Oh shit. Something the befell. I'm getting his name wrong. I think that's the legendary hero for or the for Nurgle. Uh, he's on a big old run night. Um, something the befell. I'm, I'm forgetting his name, but that's gonna be basically just like a melee uh, character, just a big old beat stick. Um, basically, just like a legendary uh, like uh, um, what is it called? The exalted hero of Nurgle. So yeah, he's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, he's on a rot night uh, mount. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. This is gonna be Epidemius. I just. Uh, I just think he seems boring. Um, he's basically like a Nurgle's accountant or whatever. It's just, yeah, it's fine. He's, I'm assuming he's going to be the legend, the FLC Lord um, for the DLC. So, yeah. So, if you guys are like him, then you got that. Okay, so we got land ships coming in as well. These guys look nice and big and bombastic. Okay, so they got a bunch of, looks like they got a bunch of, like, riflemen on top. And then they got the big old cannon down here. So, that's pretty cool. Carmine Dragon coming in here. Yeah, the Carmine Dragon looks really cool. Like, Carmine Dragon, the Thunder Barge, they look really awesome. Yeah, look at them. Look at them. They got, like, the steam pump thing going and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Hold on. Is there any more? Okay, good. No Shard Dragon. Or at least, I hope no Star Shard Dragon. Um, but, yeah, the land ships look decent. Um, I still think I'm going to prefer steam tanks to them, but the land ships still should be pretty fun, at least in campaign. Um, Thunder Barges look awesome. I think of the dwarf stuff, new dwarf stuff. I think the Thunder Barge has me the most excited. Um... Yeah, Toad Dragons look great for Nurgle. Also, just, like, stuff like, um... Okay, so, the big flashy stuff looks nice, but sometimes in these DLCs, just, like, a standard, like, regular unit or something like that ends up actually shining the most, right? Great example being the, um... Like, with Kislev with the Frostworms. Because uh, the Frostworms, they got great animations. They look really cool, but they're actually kind of dog shit because they're hitboxes or something like that. Collision attacks. Something there's bug. They don't... They do fuck all damage. So, yeah, it's just a really bad unit. However, the Kislev Halberds... Halberds which is literally just dudes with a halberd, uh, is actually a fantastic unit. It's excellent for them. It opens up their options in campaign, especially in the early game, so you're not just spamming out the same cost every, uh, with every um, every army, but also they're just really, really useful for them in multiplayer, just insanely good. Um, but yeah, so like I think the Plague Trolls are... are pla uh, plague Ogres, excuse me. They're going to be really cool. Um, Tamar Ken looks look awesome. Uh, he, for multiplayer, it might be... Um, he might be too expensive. He might end up just being too expensive because I'm assuming he's going to be because he's not a caster. I'm pretty sure he's not a caster. 
So he's going to be some big melee beat stick. Uh, huge HP pool, huge damage output, just fantastic stuff. Um, so he's going to be awesome. Elspeth Von Draken is just going to be an expensive like caster, like Dragon Lord. That's going to be awesome for Empire to get. Um, but yeah, these guys seem really cool. And uh, I think there were some Steam pages, and I saw that some unit cards got leaked on their Reddit. So I put those up. So we're going to take a look at those. So yeah, there's the Carmine Dragon looking really nice. Um, yeah, I, I hope they do something special with him because otherwise, even if it's just the regular dragon, it still looks cool. Yeah, Toad Dragon looks cool. Okay, Malachi looks dope with the fucking, he's got his wrench and he's got his uh, double barrel shotgun. That's awesome. And uh, so yeah, these guys look pretty sick. Uh, anyway, let's go on to the unit cards here. These are the unit cards, uh, allegedly, I think. I don't know if this was officially put out by CA or if these are leaks. I think they're leaks. So take these with a grain of salt. Okay, so it looks like there's the land ship. It looks like they're also getting a steam tank that basically has a Hellbaster volley gun instead of, uh, like, the regular cannon. So that's awesome. Fantastic stuff. This is a known theme DLC, so no surprise they're getting war machines and, like, a lot of DACA. So that's great. Um, especially, please, like, fingers crossed, um, the Empire Engineers get this in, like, a regular steam tank as a mount. Something. At least one of these, all right? Next, it looks like we got... Two different variants of Nolan Ironsides or something of that nature. Or maybe these guys are like Hawkland Long Rifles. Actually, wait. The green and the red on the fucking uh, pantaloons over here. Um, I think these guys are going to be Hawkland Long Rifles. Uh, I don't know if they're actually going to be like Giselles completely. To the point where they have like the 275 range like the Giselles do. They could easily just end up being um, like 180, 190 range or something like that. Uh, basically just handgunners with longer range. I think that it's it'd be fine. I think that'd be fine. Those can be pretty fun. Um, these guys, on the other hand, the repeater, the Nolan Ironsides with the uh, repeater um, rifles, I think these guys are going to be one of my favorite units also for uh, Empire, because yeah, they're just really cool. First of all, they look nice. I like the helmets, the spiky helms. Um, they look like a World War One kind of unit or something like that, or something approaching that era. But yeah, really, really cool, the repeater rifles. Like, Outriders are also really fun, but getting an infantry version of them is going to be cool. These guys, I don't know who they are, because the Knights of Moor are already in the game. And they get the, the skull thingy. So they're probably something else that I don't know about. If any of you know what this is, then uh, do feel free to let me know in the comments. Otherwise, this is the one for the dwarves. So we got Doom Seekers here. I think those are the other slayers. Um, but yeah, Doom Seekers here basically seems, I'm guessing, I actually wouldn't be surprised if they're like an anti infantry version of slayers. That would be pretty cool because both of the current slayers are anti large. Goblin Hero as well. We saw that um, in trailer. It looked pretty cool. Um, this could be just a fun, like, anti infantry piece. I'm guessing it won't be like huge. Like, um, massive range like probably definitely like a shorter range artillery unit kind of deal and uh thunder barge yeah we saw it looks awesome they got like the little galley with dudes chilling just drinking a pint and we got um yeah the double cannons on the front you got the thunderers on the deck uh just yeah really awesome and also the bombardments look sick so yeah fantastic unit uh they did a really good job with the model i think then we have what looks like another um like a sword and a pistol unit that could be pretty cool like a hybrid infantry unit that's actually pretty sick so yeah, I like those guys. They could be like, because Malachi Mikeson, his like whole thing is that he's basically like, um, he's a mad like engineer or whatever. Had some daring ideas, but unfortunately some accidents uh, led to a bunch of dwarves like just getting killed and stuff like that. So he took a Slayer Oath uh, uh, off of his shame from those, inc those accidents. So maybe these can be some like sort of similar exiled dudes that are just like roving around with him or something like that. That could be cool. Um, and see... These guys look like another rifle, like a shotgun unit, maybe? Because they have, like, the double barrels. Because the double barrels that are kind of similar to what he had. So, yeah. Looks like they got another uh, rifle, like, rifle unit or shotgun, like, hybrid kind of rifle shotgun unit. Maybe it's like, a longer range shotgun. Something like that. I don't know. That looks pretty cool either way. So, yeah. That's pretty sick. And for Nurgle, looks like, so, yeah. We got Plague Ogres here. So, yeah. Very awesome. Gives them, like, a, a more aggressive option. Okay, we got Rot Knights as well. Again, very awesome. Gives them a mobile, uh, source of mobile pressure and uh, offense. And we got Toad Dragons. This is just the regular one, not the Tamarcan's mount. So yeah, fantastic. They do definitely look like a more um, uh, more aggressive and dynamic kind of monster, at least for Nurgle. Um, yeah, especially because Nurgle's single entities, they either are like Kugath or Great and Clean ones, where they're just like really slow, lumbering, like they only really work for like a heal blob, which again, to me, just gets boring kind of quick. Um, or there's something like a Beast of Nurgle, which just kind of sucks. So, um, but these guys could be, like, a nice breath of fresh air for, uh, Nurgle. Then we got Pestigors, it looks like. 
So these guys are do have great weapons and it looks like they're decently armored. So I'm guessing they're gonna be like best of gores and not like gores. Because like for Zinch, the Zon Gores, they basically tech them into basically just being marked um gore unit, gore infantry. Uh Zinch marked gore gore infantry. So they ended up being like a they're actually a pretty solid like intermediate um infantry for Zinch. These guys look like they're gonna be um basically heavily armored, uh do a lot of damage. Um the problem is like uh, Nurgle doesn't really need that. They already have Chaos Warriors and uh, Chosen with Great Weapons of Nurgle. So it's like these guys will kind of just fill that same niche. Maybe be like slightly faster. But I don't know. It depends on like speed and stuff like that. They could be interesting, but I don't know. They could also just end up being just underwhelming. An underwhelming source of something that um, Nurgle already has. Because the problem is also like these guys seem like they'll only be good at like anti-infantry kind of stuff. And Nurgle already kills infantry fine. Nurgle's problem is like they struggle against like mass range and uh, large stuff. Which, um, stuff like, by the way, Rot Knights and, um, Toad Dragons should be able to help them deal with, like, big single entities and stuff like that. Big mobile single entities. Because Kugath is a good duelist. The problem is, like, he's just slow. So he can't actually fight anything. Or he can't dictate those engagements as well. So, uh, yeah, something, a more dynamic force, a source of D elite DPS is quite nice. Otherwise, we got, looks like, Bile Trolls here. Same thing as with the Plague Ogres, uh, fantastic, because both Ogres and Trolls are about 54 speed, I think they are. They'll probably be slightly less, like 48, 50 speed for Nurgle, but still, like, relative to Nurgle, that's, like, an aggressive option that gives them some breathing room to be able to take, like, maybe, like, wider or more aggressive bolts. Like, you can have infantry with a bunch of, like, Nurglings and uh, Marauders of Nurgle as, like, your chaff, and then you can have, like, your DPS will be in the form of, like, Rot Knights, uh, Bile Trolls, uh, Plague Ogres, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you can actually get more like offensive with Nurgle, which is great. Um, so yeah, that stuff looks really cool. Otherwise, we got these like, um, this is a Steam page for them, because they did the thing where they let you buy them separately or buy them all together. So just taking a look at Elspeth's uh, Steam page. Let's take a look. Embrace Sorcery and Wisdom with New Lords, Heroes, and Units, uh, okay, yeah, that's just whatever. Embrace Strengths and Magic and Gunpowder with New Gnomes and Pre-Old Gunnery School. This could be cool. This could give them like unique, uh, some like unique buffs or something like that for their, um, for their uh, war machines and artillery and guns and stuff like that. So that could be pretty sick, depending on how creative CA gets with it. Okay, because one thing I will say, like with Shadows of Change, I know that like part of the issue with it was just like not as much like content, like as much like units and stuff like that. There just wasn't as much of it, so that's why the update brought in a few new units, brought in a few new lower like heroes and stuff like that, which is fine, which is good. I think it's good that they beef that up but another problem with it was that just like a lack of like really engaging mechanics it seems like the only good like decent one was um 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 oh my god what's his name you want pose uh mechanic otherwise everybody seemed to think like um um at least from the stuff i saw people were saying that uh um uh what's her name i can for some reason everybody in the multiplayer calls her like mama stank or stankia Mother Ostankia, I think it is. Um, her mechanics are sort of just like, almost like boringly OP in the sense that it's just like point click and now you're just like way better than your stuff. So, yeah. But if they can get creative with these uh, mechanics, their campaign mechanics, I think that'll just be a fantastic step uh, step forward and improvement from um, previous DLCs like got CA and a bunch of hot water with their audience. But otherwise, yeah, purchase exclusive and powerful units by unlocking the Amethyst Armory. So this sounds awesome. If this is, like, on the level of something like, um, uh, what's it called? Like, It Gets Workshop. It Gets Workshop, in his campaign, is, like, one of the, like, hallmarks of CA's, uh, work. At least with Total War Warhammer. Because, uh, his campaign is just awesome. Everybody loved his. So, yeah, if you get something, like, in, like, it's at least as fun and, like, creative as, um, It Gets uh, Workshop in, in the system, then you have a really good, uh, a really good start for a fun DLC. Travel instantly between friendly settlements with the Guardians of Moral. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, so if they get teleportation, I hope that God the Lizardmen get it at some point too. Because, like, come on. Like, why would Empire have teleportation but not Lizardmen? Uh, Theodore Bruckner, yeah, he's the um, Hound of Judgment, a skilled fighter. Joins Empire as a legendary hero. He's basically just going to be uh, a beat stick. Kind of like Henri Le Massif for um, Bretonia. That's basically what he's going to be. Um, improve your odds of five new units, a generic lord, a generic hero, and a further three regiments of renown. So the generic hero, I think, is going to be that engineer guy we saw earlier. The generic lord, I think it's just going to be um, the caster lords. That really does seem to be what it's going to be. Um, so, yeah. 
Uh, Elspeth von Draken. Elspeth von Draken, the Dark Lady of Nolan, is a respected advisor to the Elector Counts and instrumental at keeping the plagues of Nurgle at bay. As a magistrix of the Amethyst Order, the Graveyard Rose may be all that stands in the Maggot Lord's way. As a powerful spellcaster, Elspeth von Draken soars on across the skies on her Carmine Dragon with a strong helping of magical mastery under her belt. Elspeth von Draken is committed to um, protecting the Empire by any means necessary, and her alliance with Nolan has allowed her to help support the forces of Empire in a unique way. The true potential of the Empire's gunpowder units can be unleashed, with Nolan's Imperial Gunnery School furthering the weaponry of the Empire. To do this, magic and black powder can no longer be separate entities and instead must work together to ensure the forces of chaos are kept at bay. Okay, so again, this could lead to some pretty awesome, like, uh, units. So that can be, for, that are a lot of fun to play with. So that could be fantastic stuff, depending on, you know, if CA is able to get creative with it. Which, you know, hopefully they can. They've done it before, like with Ica Claw's workshop, his workshop was fantastic. So they definitely are capable of making an awesome DLC. So yeah, hopefully they uh, found some of that magic. Otherwise, let's go on to Malachi Mikeson, Mikeson, uh, Mikeson, I, I never know how to pronounce the last one. But anyway, Malachi Mikeson, embrace conflict and ingenuity with a new suite of lords, heroes, units, and mechanics to enhance your campaign roster on and off the battlefield. Malachi Mikeson brings unique campaign mechanics to the dwarves with a brand new objective in the realm of chaos independent from the Urson storyline, plus new units and heroes to help them achieve total victory. Okay, this one, I'm not going to lie, dude. Like... Has anybody here actually thought about the Realm of Chaos campaign instead of like Immortal Empires? Like, do we, how many? I want. I wonder what the player numbers are. Like the percentage of players who played that ever since Immortal Empires came out, because Immortal Empires just seems like the de honestly the default uh, Total War Warhammer setting. So yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, seek a glorious death, reap the rewards, and test your latest innovations as Malachi Mikeson. Bolster your units from the skies with the spirit of Grugni. A mobile workshop and transport vessel. Okay, same thing with um, Elspeth von Draken. This could be really fun and give you some awesome, like, uh, like, bu like unique buffs and stuff like that to your um, your ranged assets, your war machines, stuff like that. That could be really cool. Um, you can get some awesome stuff out of that, uh, depending on how creative you get with it. Garagrim Ironfist, the war mourner of Karakadrin and son of Angrim Ironfist, joins Malachi as a legendary hero. Basically, just I'm, I'm guessing he's just going to be basically like a baby Angrim. Then. Anti-Lord Slayer Hero. That could be cool. Um, considering that dwar Dwarves are probably not getting another DLC, I am surprised they didn't go with Joseph Bugman. Because he's just like a much bigger name. So yeah, I don't know. He st could still be fun, but just, you know, interesting. Improve your odds with five new units of Generic Lord, a Generic Hero, and a further three Regiments of Renown. So we did go through, uh, yeah, these five new units. Um, I haven't seen the Regiments of Renown. Maybe those got leaked too, but who knows. So, Malachi McCusson, having been injected from the Engineer's Guild after a series of catastrophic malfunctions that cost the lives of many a dwarf, Malachi McCusson took the Slayer's oath and continues to engineer grand machines to this day. Assisted by his entourage of Slayers, one day he hopes to overcome his shame by seeking a glorious death in battle, so at last he may be seen as a true inventor of incredible works and a legend of his time. So, I think these guys might be his retinue of Slayers. These guys and the Doomseekers. With the fascination of creating grand machines, Malachi is a ranged support character, damaging from afar with his guns, bombs, artillery, and the most deranged of munitions to whittle down his opponent. So if they give him, like, unique kinds of munitions, that can be cool. Like something he can toggle in between, or whatever, that can be interesting. Malachi craves nigh unwinnable battles and fights with mighty foes as a slayer who seeks out these worthy combatants to atone for his sins. But as an engineer, he sees it as an opportunity to learn new tricks, advance his equipment, and crush all that stand before him in the name of progress. <clears throat> So yeah, he seems pretty cool. Anyway, on to Tamarkan. <coughs> this big ugly guy. Embrace decay and tyranny with the new lords, heroes, units, and mechanics to enhance your campaign roster on and off the battlefield. Tamarkan brings unique campaign mechanics to Nurgle with a brand new objective. And yeah, no one cares. Uh, <clears throat> gather chieftains from powerful factions across the known world and become the ultimate warlord of Nurgle as Tamarkan. So that's probably some like vassalization thing. One of the first to flock to Tamarkin's banner, the new legendary hero, Kazik. There we go, Kazik. Kazik? Kazik? The Befouled. So that's the guy I was thinking of earlier. So yeah, he's going to be your, like, uh, basically an exalted hero of Nurgle, just like, uh, just souped up, basically. The Chaos Nord Lord of Nurgle and Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle reinforce the Gadfathers. Throng as new lord and hero choices, respectively. Okay, so that's their generic stuff. Okay, so I'm guessing this is actually going to be way bigger for Warriors of Chaos than it would be for uh, Nurgle. Because now you get to heal Archeon, and you get to heal um, my man Kazra, uh, 
Why? What is wrong? Kazrak. Yes, Kazrak. I don't know why. Okay. So yeah, you get your, your healing out for your like heroes and stuff like that. So that's actually potentially really strong. Um, yeah, so really good stuff. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, he's not going to be as big of a deal for Nurgle themselves because their hero, their lords can heal themselves really well. Although I guess you can also heal your toad dragons and your um, because Tamarkan, to my knowledge, is not a caster, so you can heal him and that can be pretty sick. Um, Wait, why did I say Kazrak? I'm thinking of Kolek. Kolek Sunnyder. God, what is wrong with me? Yeah, they're just the Ks. So many names in this damn game. Anyway, so Kolek Sunnyder. You can he you can heal him, okay? So, as Warriors of Chaos, which actually should be pretty damn big for him. So, yeah, which is great. Or potentially great. I don't know. We'll have to see. Actually, for Warriors of Chaos, that actually won't be a problem. As big of a problem. Because, like, like healing is kind of boring. But, um, especially because Mutal Vortex Beasts aren't as busted as they used to be, because when they came out, they were, like, fucking amazing against everything, right? They can duel big monsters, they're Mortis Engine, they have, they're have they really fast, too, so it's not like you can easily shoot them up, uh, just, like, easily avoid them. So, yeah, they had everything, but now they kind of tech them into being, like, an anti-infantry specialist, which I think is fine. Um, so, yeah, it's actually, like, a fun monster now. So, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So, yeah, Warriors of Chaos get, like, a ancillary uh benefit here so yeah tamarkan the maggot lord tamarkan the maggot lord and champion of nurgle is one of the greatest chaos warlords to ever afflict the known world a mighty leader to some and a bloated corpse worm to others those that stand against tamarkan quickly fall under the banner of his bringer of desolation as a hard-hitting tank with the strength of an ogre and the vigor of nurgle's greatest combatants tamarkan rides into battle atop his unique toad dragon booby bolos to unleash rot on any that dare oppose the warlord Tamarkan's crusade across the land is not merely one of destruction or decay, for he amasses a horde of heroic characters as he goes, absorbing the many strengths of those that could not defeat him. These heroic characters, chieftains, chieftains are added to his ever-growing empire once Tamarkan has displayed his true dominating power, granting the Maggot Lord a suite of champions and warriors for use in his grand crusade. So this actually might not even be a vassalization thing, but also like a, a basically a confederation, a forced confederation, where like if you defeat a faction, then you confederate it, confederate it and you get their like lords and stuff like that. Um, and he probably gives some like unique traits and stuff like that to those lords. So that could be interesting. You can get some fun uh, generic characters out of that. With enough devoted chief, chieftains under his wing, Tamarkin can pursue ultimate victory. So yeah, you can end up with actually like unique, um, like generic lords and stuff like that. So that could actually be pretty cool because actually one thing... I actually don't think, uh, I forgot to notice this from when I skimmed, because I saw him when I skimmed through earlier. So, yeah, see these guys? These are mammoths. I don't think Nurgle is going to get mammoths, because as far as I saw, I'm not seeing any mammoths here. But this could be emblematic of, like, the chieftains that you absorb. And they probably have unique um, Nurgle-themed traits with them that make them actually pretty um, interesting compared to just regular generic, like, Norskin chieftains or whatever. Because in the, in the like, lore or whatever, when in the Siege of uh, Nolan, Tamarkin did have a big host of... Uh, Norskin warlords that are like northern tribes, tribesmen with him. So yeah, that actually uh, tracks. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, those, um, we just had a brief look at, I guess, the leaked unit cards for the factions. We had a look at um, these characters. I think the one I'm most interested for interested in is um, the Nurgle one, because it just seems to open up their playstyle a lot more, because you get, like, these um, much more dynamic uh, units, like Monstrous Infantry, more aggressive Monstrous Infantry, more aggressive Monstrous Cavalry, which is really nice, and also an aggressive um, single entity monster, which just looks fantastic to me, and just really is, like, um, adds just a much more complexity to the Nurgle roster, which, uh, up until this point, has been very one-note and kind of just boring, or at least it got old fast for me. Otherwise, yeah, the dwarves, they just look awesome. Like, they got new Slayer units, it looks like. Uh, they got a new ra uh, range unit. And they got uh, Thunder Barge. Empire, like, the new Daka and also this new Steam Tank with, like, the Hellblaster gun just looks awesome to me. These new uh, cavalry could look pretty awesome as well. Um, so, yeah, all three of these, they actually do look pretty fun in campaign. Uh, ultimately, again, we've only had, like, a bare-bones first look at them in a trailer. So, if things could easily just be shit. Uh, they could be amazing. They could be shit. Who fucking knows? Uh, we will have to wait and see, but otherwise, hopefully you guys found that interesting, and uh, I will see you guys later.